what I'm doing today is I'm going to turn this cross stitch board of nine nine men Morris board that I designed and I'm going to turn it into a little quilt that we can use to play the board game. So to start with what you need is some sort of cutting tools. I will be using both the rotary cutter and the scissors. Um, a fabric that you want to use to go around the outside of the board. I'm also going to use this fabric as the backing fabric and then some sort of wadding to put inside. This is a very thin one. You can see it's a very thin one. Um, it's enough, you don't need anything thick. You don't need anything fancy. So to start with, I'm going to trim down, count and then trim down the outside of this cross stitch. And then I'm gonna trim panels from this fabric to go around the outside because we're going to make a border around the cross stitch and then we're going to add the backing. So I'm just going to go find my pin so I can do some counting. Okay. Now I've got my pins. So I will be doing I'll be looking at going one, two, three. I think, yeah, so I like that. So I'm going to be looking at sewing the fabric on around that line, which is in my case, one, two, three, four, five stitches out. So the whole way around, I'm going to find the point five stitches out from that edge. One, two, three, four, five. Now you can, you don't need pins to do this. Two, four, five. Although pins do make it easier. And then You can see what I'm doing. So one, two, three, four, five. So see here I've marked five stitches out on each side. So we can see where we need to cut. Now you do not cut on those five stitches because that's where you're going to be doing your seam. I usually go another four or five stitches out and then cut around there. I just make sure it's consistent so that when I get to do it to the other end. So, start down at this corner. I'm just going to bring this line down a bit further. One, two, three, four, five. And you can use as many or as little pins as you need to make sure that you've got those lines, particularly if you're using a bigger pattern. And there we go. So I've gone one, two, four, five, six from that line. So I'm going to make sure I stay at that six point the whole way around. One, two, three, four, five. So we're there. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Puts it there. The 
the one thing you need to make sure you're doing is you're leaving a good seam allowance because you don't want to be cutting too tight and for it to fray once you've stitched it up. Now, if anyone here has any experience with quilting, this would be familiar to you. It just does make it easier to sew on to later. So let's get rid of those scraps. And so now we've got our piece here. So the cross stitch is now being cut out and it's ready to go. So I'm just going to lay that to the side. And now we're going to look at this fabric. So what I'm going to be doing with it is I'm going to be cutting strips about, let's have a look, strips about three inches wide to go round. That'll make it about two and a half inches once all the borders are added. And so it's going to be surrounded. By fabric. So you can kind of see the effect that's going to happen here. So it's going to be surrounded in a square by fabric. And then I'm also going to back it with fabric. Now you're not going to need any binding fabric with the method that I use because you'll be turning it out. But it just depends how you want to do it. So cross stitch tucked off to the side. So I've got a nice good space to work in. I'm going to trim this edge off to start with. That way I know where I'm working at. Now this is already being squared. So the edge of this fabric is squared. If you're not working with a squared piece of fabric, make sure that you have something solid to work off. And my blade is blunt, but I don't have spare blades right now and can't go get them. Okay. So now I've squared off that edge and then I'll be working off this edge. So turning the fabric round. I'm going to do four panels. Actually just checking this measurement across here. 11 inches. Yeah. So I'm going to do four panels at three inches wide. It may end up being a bit smaller once stitched up. Please no one comment on just how blunt my blade is. I know. Trick though, if you've got a blunter blade, is not to lift the ruler before you've checked that you've cut the whole way down. So you can see here, I'm lining up along the top led edge and lining down that side. So I've got it squared. I'm not being 100% perfect. because I'm not trying to make this square exactly a certain size because I'm not having to match it in with something else. I'm not having to size it to what someone else has. So I don't have to be perfect and I don't have to match this in to make a big quilt. It's just one square. 
that you can see here. So we'll have our top. And the sides. Now I'm going to take you over to the sewing machine. Just deciding how I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a bit different from what I'd normally do. I would normally do the two sides and the two tops. But because I'm just looking at the lengths of these, if I try and do it that way, at the two sides and the... No, I think I'm going to do the easy way. So this is the easiest way I've always found to do it. And you can hear a bit of my reasoning going on. So stitch these two panels on and then you'll stitch these two panels on. So I'll end up looking like that. Now, in order to do this, you can see there's a right and a wrong side to this fabric. So what you're gonna to need to do is very carefully lay these panels right sides together with the fabric. Now, I square up one side and don't bother with the other one. See, I've got this pin in here, and you can see where I pulled the pin out here. And so I do carefully double count, so that one, two, three, four, five. And let's go down there. Marking that pin along that five line. And that's where you'll be sewing. I've actually got these pins around the roll. So you can see, that's where you'll be sewing. And I always start from the shorter end and sew down. So I'm just gonna turn these pins around so they're easier to pull out. And I always sew with the Ada side up. That way you can see clearly the line you've got to sew down. Now in this case, we'll sew down there and we'll sew down there. Let's line this one up. So one, I could just follow that pin line down. I'm just recounting because it's just easier. I'll pull that one out. Spread that out a bit. Now, just reiterate, right sides together. So you should have the right side of your cross stitch and the right side of your fabric facing each other because you'll be folding them out once you're done. So let's take this over to our sewing machine. And we'll sew these panels on. Okay, now we're over the sewing machine and I hope you're going to be able to see this as I'm doing it. So as you're doing this, you want to be working, usually with quilting you'd be working a quarter inch seam. Turn this, wake this up. 
In the case of this though, I'm just going to run down that Ada line. Okay. Hope you can still see this. And just be very careful. Just be very careful to keep following that line down your Ada. So I just ease that out. I don't take the end pin out all the way I slide it as I go keep it in for as long as possible so you can see that line on the Ada. Now you don't have to sew all the way down here this will be cut off soon and then let's do the other side See here, I've got it slightly off by one. And now we've got our two sides and we're going to move over to the ironing board. Okay, now we're over at the ironing board. So with these folded in, I'm just going to go over and then you carefully fold it out on that seam. and pressing it down. So what you want is a nice crisp seam. Now you notice how I did that, how I did it away from the Ada fabric? Because what you want is all this fabric here going towards your coloured fabric. So you very carefully do it so it's laying flat. Now in the case of this, if you don't have an iron, you can finger press it and that is possible. The iron gets it crisper, but I have finger pressed before. So I'm just gonna flatten that out and then you carefully fold it away from the cross stitch. Be careful not to catch the pins that you've already still got in there. Now you need to do this before you get to, you put the top and bottom panels, next panels on. So before you put those two panels on, because this will make the seams inside much nicer. And I'm just going to grab those two panels. Let's do some pinning. Okay. 
since I've got it all set up here. A couple things I like to do at this point is I will trim this off. It doesn't have to be perfect. A little bit messy. If you want to be perfect, you take it back down to the rotary cutter. But because I'm just going to be sewing on more fabric on top, I just cut them off. And again, really important, right sides together. And now you lay it down the seam of the fabric. Again, so pinning from the cross stitch side, um, from the Ada side, so you can see where you need to go. see there and then you're also bringing that seam out though because this time you'll be sewing out to here so I'll put a few more pins in this time so I'm just gonna okay and so here is my piece all pinned down the two long sides now. And we're going to take it back over to the sewing machine and sew down those two sides. Okay. So the big thing with this one and the big problem with this is you're going to have to watch your seam. So as you're coming down, because you're coming from the coloured fabric this time, down onto the Ada. So you've got to watch that at the top here, your seam's the right distance. So if I just come down here and place that down, I can see where it sits, distance from the fabric from where the pin is. And so you want that same distance up here. Keeping that same distance and being very careful that when you come through with your Ada, that you're hitting at that right spot. one seam done. Come through and do the second one. So again, paying attention. So if I lay that down, see the Ada is going to be sitting right at that edge for me. Bring it back. Now this side's not quite squared, because that's the bit I just cut loosely. So if you did it on your rotary cutter, took a bit down and squared that up properly, this stage is a little bit easier. The thing is you keep looking for where you're going, not just where you are. And it's easier to get a long straight line. Same goes if you're doing drawing. You look where you're going, not where you are. And you 
can easily get a really nice straight line. And then we're heading back to the ironing board again. To neaten up these. It's looking really good there. So now we've sewn all the sides onto our cross stitch, onto the cross stitch piece. We're going to again iron these sides smooth. Again, you want to iron away from the cross stitch. I'm just being careful not to push down on my cross stitch. I don't want it flattened. And I seem to have gotten a thread caught in there. Head to this side. See where it's coming through. And just pull it back. Okay. Now our piece is here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take it back down to the cutting board. We're going to square up around these sides and then cut a piece for the back and a piece of wadding. So to start with I'm just going to quickly square this up. So turning it so I've got this edge. And what I'm doing is I'm using my it's looking really good. Let's sew up there. And just down at that two and a quarter line every time. And it'll be different for you. But at the same time, it's much easier. It is on that line. It's much easier when you're doing just a mini quilt like this because you're not trying to make it exactly the size of every other block. So you're not having to square to something else, you just square into itself. This step is important because it's what makes it look neatly finished. It'll make everything look square at the end because you have made it square. Of course, this is only important if you want it to be exactly square. So, we have our square now that is ten and a quarter. And just double check. Perfect. Ten and a quarter by ten and a quarter. 
hard, bit hard to see in this light. The light shining on the ruler. So the square is 10 and a quarter by 10 and a quarter. So we now need to cut a square of wadding that's the same size and a square of backing that's the same size. I'm just going to move that off to the side. There are a couple ways to do this. Just going to double check. So if I lay that on there, yep, I'm going to have enough room. So there's a couple ways to do this. But I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to lay this fabric down. I'm going to move my little pieces out before I lose them. Okay. So, lay this corner down. Lay this fabric on it. I'm going to make sure it's all matched up to this corner so we're going to lose the least amount of fabric as possible. Now there are lots of ways I could do this. I could be extremely fancy and count everything out, measure it. I could cut them all separately. I'm going to go the easy way. Turn my cross stitch over. Make sure because it does come in, the wadding comes in a little bit there. So I'm going to square it up on this side so I don't have to cut this edge. So I'll just cut the three edges around. Just being very careful in case of this. Okay, because I can feel that edge there. So just being very careful not cut our neatly squared top. There are other ways you can do it. There's a reason why, that's the reason why I turned this upside down though. It's a little bit easier to see the distant difference in the fabric. Not much though. Front and back is very similar in colour. Now. Mm. Sure, I'm cutting carefully. You could also do this at the same time you're squaring the fabric. That is also a possibility. Now this is not an iron-on wadding, but an iron-on interface would do the same job. out the end. So carefully you place cross stitch with right side facing up, your backing fabric right side facing down, then you're wadding. I'll have to edit that other bit out. Okay. So again, pinning it carefully together, making sure you've got all three layers. Now, when you're sewing it up, 
you won't be sewing the whole way around. You will be leaving a gap that you can turn the fabric through. I like this method of finishing something because what it means is you don't have to add a binding to it. So if you do a lot of quilting, um, you can do it so that you make it that you have a binding and dealing with everything right sides together, um, right sides out. Oh, but I like this method. So I'm going to mark down one side. I'm just going to pick this one. So two points. So this is my gap. So when you're sewing, you're going to be starting here, coming all the way around with a quarter inch seam the whole way around, and then stopping there, leaving this gap here open. You must leave this gap open, otherwise you will not be able to turn it right side out. And then I'll show you a really good trick to finishing that edge. So you'll be sewing. Now, remember, right side of the fabric of the cross stitch facing up with the right side of the backing fabric facing it. Because when we turn, we'll be turning through this gap here. So now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and we're going to sew around this edge. Okay. Let's get ourselves set up. So, remembering we start here and we're sewing all the way around to this pin, leaving a gap. Now, quarter inch seam is enough. I have this cool, not function on my machine that I use, but if you don't have it, it doesn't matter. Okay. Now, to get nice crisp corners, something that I've found that instead of turning a corner, I just carefully sew off one corner, pick it up. Don't pull it all the way out. Then you lay, come back down. So we're working back down to the next corner. I find that gives you a crisper corner than trying to turn it. And you can get a better get it to a better point. a little bit. My tension's off somewhere. Daughter's been playing with my machine. Okay. Coming down this third side, so go a little bit faster. left in that bobbin.
sometimes easy if you did work with the cross stitch up. I'm actually just going to quickly turn this. Something to note is I didn't use a quilting fabric, I've just used a normal sewing fabric for this, so it's a lot lighter, so it's not reacting in the way that a normal quilting fabric would, being a lot lighter. It's a little bit frustrating actually. And that does happen too. You just got to keep an eye on it. Make sure you don't go too far before you untangle it or cut it. bring that through you just bring that under now on this last time remember you need to stop I know the bobbin threads almost out not that close And see, we've got our piece. A couple things you can do is clip the corners before you turn, but I'm just going to turn it through. One thing to check, and I kind of checked as I went, is making sure each row, each line, that you've managed to catch all three layers as you've gone around. If you find you haven't, you're going to have to go over that section and just recatch it. Now, there are a couple ways you can finish this. Finish this corn, this edge. The way I like leaves it fairly seamless. or fairly unnoticeable, for a better word, is actually adding a decorative top stitch. So you carefully fold this edge over. So you carefully fold it over. see and then to hide the fact that that there's a couple ways you could do an invisible ladder stitch down that and it wouldn't be noticeable but something I like to do in particular with wadding like this inside is I'm going to do a top stitch right around this edge just inside from the edge now I don't start I'll start from a corner to take the focus away from there. So make sure these corners are all pushed out and neat. 
if you trim them, they're going to be crisper. Actually, going to pull it, and I'm going to start halfway down one of these sides. And now you're right on the edge. So it's not very far from that edge where you're going stitching around. Sometimes if you've used a very thick wadding, because you've had to make it thick, you may want to trim the wadding down a bit in the seam before turning. Because my wadding was so thin, I don't need to do that. And then just very carefully, so you can see where I've met where the seam thing is, making sure that is definitely turned in. manipulate this a bit and just make sure that everything's sitting nice and flat you can put it through an iron if you want before doing this just running it through the machine this decorative thread in just a plain cream. My fabric is so fancy that I don't particularly want to do this in a fancy color. But there's no reason you couldn't be doing this top six sex this top stitch section in any colored thread so you can make a bit of a feature out of it I'm just going to come back actually that looks pretty tightly knotted on that side But I'm going to start back here and come through and recatch those threads, that spot, just to be certain nothing's gone wrong. check as I went but I didn't quite catch this corner here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I've folded that over in such a way that when I come through here with this top stitch I'm going to catch it and it's going to be secured again 
That's the other reason for this top stitch around the edge. Make sure you've got everything in there. Now I'm going to come really close to this edge. that's all secured and coming back down to the starting point. And then finishing off with a knot. So you can see here I've re that's point secured as well. So that was actually coming loose. And just double checking as I go around. Now I used, because I used a loose wadding in this, I started and finished with a knot. So because I started with the quilting knot, I can just cut these off. But if you don't, just knot them, bring them through to the back and knot them off and then cut them like you would normally. Now, because I used a loose wadding and not a fusible interface of, or an iron wadding, one other thing I'm going to do, and I like this because it looks neat, is I'm going to come through and do a decorative top stitch just inside the quilting, the fabric, the coloured fabric. So you can see the effect come through. So about the same distance. I'm going to make sure that I've got both threads secured. On my machine I have to hold the threads otherwise they get loose when you first start. Um, so coming through just on the inside and the coloured. see that it's just added a really nice border around your stitching. Now in the case of this I didn't finish with the quilting knot. So you just bring these through to the back. That's why you do have to in that case overlap each other a little bit on the front and there's a couple of different ways you can tie off this knot I usually just grab two of them and just tie a granny knot I found that works fine. I'm sure there's other people that will tell you to do it a different way. So there you go, finished quilted board. And here we have our finished quilted board. So, got our little pieces. So you can play a game of Nine Men's Morris or Mill. I do have instructions. 
how to make these little pieces up in the Facebook group you get where you get the instruct where you get the pattern for how to make this board as well. It's just a quick little project, give you something and give you a game, a cool game you can play with your family. when you need something to do.